All right, hello, hello, and welcome to my favorite ever podcast, transformed into a cartoon ever. Um, I'm sure it's not the only one, but it's the only one I know. Anyway, this, this man, the guy that inspired that round-headed cartoon, favorite, favorite guy ever. Just amazing. Anyway, um, oh, I have a real whoop going on. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I get distracted easily. Okay, um, 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 Ricky, yes, Ricky Gervais show, season three, episode seven. Insert title here. I believe it's Law and Order. I had to change my source because my source was uploading. Well, my source, the channel that I was watching them on, all the ones lately have been uploaded. Either half of them, or they're cutting off endings, cutting off beginnings. This one. I noticed something was wrong because it, it only it was the only one that lasted like 18 minutes and that didn't seem right. So I just checked it out somewhere else. But this guy doesn't put the title. So I believe, again, law and order. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's going to be funny. So let's go. So, Carl, law and order. Not that interested in it, to be honest. What do you mean? I've got no interest in law and order whatsoever. It's not part of my life. That's the problem. You keep picking topics that don't buzz me. <laughs> of course they do. They don't. Well, I'm let's talk interested. about this. Let's talk about this. You're, you're a man quite obsessed with law and order. Mm. The law and order is basically to protect the innocent, isn't it? When someone wrongs us, we want justice. It's fundamental. And you do. You were sitting in your old flat in London phoning me every day that you wanted to go downstairs and smack their heads in for being late and shouting around and being drunk and you could hear it you wanted some justice yeah but nothing would have happened if i called someone up and said there's people doing noise pollution but you are you are concerned with law and order no you but wanted no your point. rights and point you ended up moving yeah, so i shouldn't have to move because of some noisy people no you shouldn't but i'm saying you were stressed no one cares though and you wanted justice but you could you thought you couldn't get justice so you moved away yeah so is... i dealt with it in my way yeah right. i hated them because right. they didn't care about anyone else. Exactly. Well, the police wouldn't get involved. There's other people who live around there who had to put up with it. No one cared. So what did it feel like every night when you were trying to watch telly and it's hot and you've got the window open or...? Yeah, you could just hear stuff. And, you know, it's, it's that thing of you get a lot of tourists in London, so they talk and it's not even as if you can listen in to what they're saying and have a, have a view on their opinion because they're foreign. <laughs> that, so would you that can't... be entertaining for you? Well, yeah, because if you can hear what people are saying, you go, oh, yeah, that's Switch a good point. Switch the telly off. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, a good know. point. Grab a cup to the window. I don't talking. But isn't it your own fault for living in central London? Well, not really, because it wasn't always like that. I'd been there years. And then all of a sudden, you know, good fellas turn up, <laughs> sat down there making a racket. <laughs> what can you say to them? <laughs> you call down, they can't hear the phone ringing. But it's louder, I think it is louder abroad than it is here. Whenever I go away on holiday, I always notice that it's always a couple of decibels higher. Really? Always. Like, the sound of bird noises and that are louder abroad. <laughs> because they're trying to get a nut above the noise of the noisy people. No, that's not true. They are. No. When I was in... Where was I? <laughs> the angles, the new angles no, of the animation! When I was in... Where was Look I? Look at it, that's so cute! Menorca or something. It was like lying there. If it wasn't a noisy local, it was the people in the villa next door. If it's not them, they suddenly collected the bottles from the bottle bank. That's a nice noise when, you, when you're just relaxing. The bottle bank. Pop that there where the villa is. So that was a racket. There was always something. There's just so much noise. And all creatures. You can't, you can't escape. It's the one thing you can't escape, noise. Your ears never turn off. No. <laughs> They're always there. But I've told you before, wear earplugs if you have to. I don't like it. But he doesn't like he, can, he says he can hear the sound of his own art. <laughs> well, there's always a sound. Of his like own eyes, what? Can, he says he can hear the sound of his own art. Heart. Well, there's always okay, a sound. Okay, okay. Like, okay. your eyes, you can close them. My eyes close all the time, and if, if, if I don't like the look of something... Yeah. No, but yeah. if I don't like the look of something, <laughs> they, they close before I even... <laughs> look how cute he looks! I love when Steven just interjects the most rational comment possible, and they don't even acknowledge that he just said something. I love it. Well, there's always a sound. Like your eyes, you can close them. 
my eyes close all the time and if, if, if I don't like the look blinking. of something yeah. no, but yeah. if I don't like the look of something they, they close before even I've thought about if I want to see it or not <laughs> what, do you think? what do you mean exactly I just mean if, if I see something on the telly or like one of those casualty programmes or something yeah. It's like my eyes know that I'm not going to like the look of it. But no, 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 no. So they You're, close no, no, quicker. No, 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 no. My ears, they, close they, quicker. they seem to be interested in everything. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm not. <laughs> no, no. What, what I mean is, you can't close your ears. Yeah, you that's can't. what I'm saying. Exactly, yeah. You can't, you can never. So that's no, why I love the idea that your eyes are closing when you were, oh, well, I was watching that. Yeah, what are you doing? Have your eyes, <laughs> your eyes ever closed something that you're going to do? No, you're they, going they to normally get it right. Your eyes are making any decisions. Right. You're making decisions. You turn away because you don't like seeing something. You don't turn away and then you're going... What was that? And your eyes going, you don't want to know. <laughs> you do not know what to do. You don't know. I'm just Carl. saying, anyway. Mm, lovely pair of tits here. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I just mean, oh. noise pollution, it's the, it's the one thing you can't escape. But the thing about law and order is... You don't want to escape um, it, You though. don't have to take it. You can combat being wronged. It's not just punishment. Or retribution. I love also. I love that he's talking about law and order and justice and all that. He his like the only crime that affects Carl is noise pollution because he has noisy neighbors or whatever. Like what? Also, I said you don't want to escape it because <clears throat> um, if if <sighs> it's hard to explain. If um if you don't hear external noises, there's 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 these things. I don't I don't know how many there are in the world. There not aren't very many, but they're called um Nikoik chambers. Is that right? Nikoika, Kamana Nikoika. I think it's Nikoik chamber, where they have like freaking meters and meters and meters and just like they turn a ginormous room into a very small space, and it's all just noise canceling foam and materials and stuff. So it's like the quietest place on earth, and the people that enter there. They, you go freaking nuts, not actual nuts, but you go freaking nuts in just a matter of minutes because you can't hear everything. You always hear all the noise pollution, the traffic, the birds, the this and that. There's no sound, no external sound whatsoever. So you start hearing your internal sound. <laughs> you start hearing your blood flowing and your heart beating and all that stuff and your breath and all that. And it's just, it's maddening. And, and usually people start feeling, you know, kind of queasy and stuff after very short periods of time it's just awful awful so you don't want no sound i understand more than anybody that having an annoying neighbors is awful i mean i have some very annoying neighbors that in fact did not help did not let me sleep last night because they were making all kinds of racket you guys don't even want to know they're always either fighting or the other thing very loudly out the window and you can hear all of it so you you always know the exact status of the relationship <laughs> even though you don't want to hear it so the turning off your ears for a while concept is quite i like that but it's just basically put headphones on and listen to music it's not not hearing but it's maybe hearing something a little bit more pleasant an audiobook or even white noise, brown noise, pig noise, whatever the color noise you like, something to not hear, that just kind of helps you calm down. But even like meditation videos and stuff, they got the birds chirping and the waterfalls and the pee pee pee, and there's some with crickets and there's some with whale sounds. I mean, you just got to learn to appreciate certain sounds and tune out other sounds. It's justice. You want to know that you're valued. Uh, you know, it is, well, this is a big issue, isn't it, Rick? Is, is, you know, is one life more important than another? If you've transgressed in a terrible way, um, you've murdered or raped, whatever, and oh, I say, I'm going to put you to death. Well, this is an interesting argument, isn't it? Whether capital punishment... I, I don't agree with execution. Carl, where do you stand on the tricky issue of capital punishment? You've given it some serious thought, I imagine. Um, so what, you're asking me, like, should he be... Should he, should he be on death row? Well, should should someone flip the switch, send him to his death in the electric chair? Um. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, that was was the that. least considered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw a little bit of flicker behind the eyes. 
I don't know what. Well, just take us through the mental process that you that you arrived at the yes with there. So you you, you know I remember because the, there was a, quite a brief gap there. I just was thinking, it's not a nice job if you work in there and you've got to flick the switch. Right. But I was wondering if, if it's possible to just do it so it's linked up to someone's switch. <laughs> what do you mean? When they put the lights on or something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like sometime tonight when the sun goes down and people start putting the lights on in their house, it could happen. But we don't it know what happen. household, they might be away on holiday. So you might get an extra two weeks. <laughs> But at least that way, because for me... Well, the so, but what my point is, you do agree that someone should be put to death. Yeah, he, he kind of went somewhere else. You've got to have something else. there to stop them people who, who don't care, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Nature's done it in a way with bees. They've gone, we've give you a weapon, but if you use it, you die. And that's like the bee. Well, so yeah. they're worried they're going to go, well, oh, that's I'm not going to do it. We do, weren't we? We have... We have people saying, one, you can't do that. That's, that's step one. Here's the law. Don't yeah, do it. But there's a lot of people Two. who go, I'm not bothered about the law. I'm not bothered about annoying people. Yeah, that's so true. So for them, at the end of the scale, you've got the chair and you stick the wires on their head and we'll fry your head. Oh. And they go, oh, God, I don't want that. Uh, I, I think a lot of those crimes, the deterrent isn't relevant. You know, things like armed robbery, maybe, where it's a risk, what can I get versus what my crime. Maybe maybe then it might be a deterrent. But then, of course, if you start to get a capital punishment for crimes that aren't murdering someone, then th that thing brings in you might as well murder them but because then you've got more <laughs> chance of getting away with it. So it's very delicate what you make people be killed for. Um, you've made a, a, an interesting and reasoned argument there, Rick. I'm looking forward to, to hearing the riposte. <laughs> The little eyebrows. The <laughs> right. That was interesting, though. When I was younger. Of course. I used to nick Mars bars. <laughs> OK. Right. Now, I did that then, and, uh, and I knew that even if I get caught, what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. It's not gonna, I'm not going to go to prison over that. But it was worth nicking, because a Mars bar, they were like 45 pence. Sure. Um, a Mars bar was a proper treat. There's a lot going on in there. A lot of yeah. chocolate, a lot of caramel. Yeah. Like, like I say, 45 pence. Yeah. So, to so me... That was, that was like an advert that went wrong just to the end. <laughs> they started off good. They go, this bar's good. He's, uh, you go there. Mars bar's a lot in it. It's like, oh, good, keep going. Yeah, it's got, it's got caramel. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's 45 pence. It's too fucking much, so fucking nick it, you're gone. <laughs> but when I was younger, that was worth a risk because I knew that I'd be getting something worth 45 pence yeah. for free. You weren't going to get the electric And I wasn't going to get done. Mm. So the stakes were high, the risk were low. You mean the stakes were high, the risk were low? <laughs> the Mars bar is the stake. Say, cool. The stakes weren't high. The stakes are what can happen to you and no, the but risk. The stakes, the stakes to the him were the, the Mars same. bar. The risk is the stake, okay? Yeah, unless you're nicking meat from a butcher's. So I understood the, the stakes him. are high and the risk is low. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but I what do. you meant was it the was gain the was high. The gain was the, high. Yeah. The gain was high. Yeah, the risk was low. Yeah. But no, it's not, wasn't it? wasn't, was it? Because 45p isn't a lot unless you're it a kid. It is when you're a kid. Most of the time, I didn't want to say which shop it was that I nicked it from, but it's where I did my paper round. Now, the thing is... So you're nicking from your own boss? Ah, but listen... I used to oh, wake him up. That I is him terrible. Run. No, because I... That is terrible. This is awful. That Go is, on, hang on. I want to hear, really no, hear him rationalise his Because that terrible sweet crime. old man he used to give... It's not an old man. I used to go around and wake him up, there. right? He yeah. hated running that place. Right. Uh, if anything, I'd say I was his best asset. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> Yeah. Because I don't know you were nicking from him. You were yeah, nicking from him. I don't know how business. much he made on papers, but he'd probably go forty-five Listen, free profit. Hold on. I they got their papers really early because I I got up early. Yeah. I used to go round to the well, shop. Well, you know, Mars a day four. helps you work, rest, and steal. So so I used to go round there, <laughs> wake him up. He'd be like, "What are you doing round here so early?" <laughs> Don't know, I'm just angry. What? I'm just I'm just hungry for work. No. Right. Oh, well, good, well, good boy. Pip. I'm just going to turn away a minute yeah, um, yeah. while you stand there in front of the confectionery. Um, mm. I'll turn away now, and I've looked back now, and it's the papers. And yeah. thanks so much, Carl, because you, you're a lovely He's kid. He's like an honourable and trustworthy guy. Yeah, I can't guy. really afford to... I've uh, been betrayed so many times. That's why yeah. my lovely wife's no longer with me. You know, she ran off with Ken. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, at least I've got a friend. At least I've got you, one young you friend. You turn up early, you're... Oh, God, it, it's brilliant. Oh, and Carl, keep a lookout, because... Um, Someone's been nicking your mask. Yeah, I know, I, know it's, I know it's not you, because I trust you implicitly. And, and, and by the way, Carl, why don't you take a Mars bar for free? Oh, thanks. Well, that never happened. <laughs> right, so, I'm getting 50 pence a day for delivering papers. Mm. But I needed the energy. 
Right. Ah, there you go. Now, if I, if I spent my 50p on a Mars bar, yeah. 5p profit a day, it's not worth it. No. So, help yourself. I knew I was doing a no, good no, job no, for you. No, 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 so help yourself. That doesn't, that, that doesn't follow, so help yourself. Get another job, leave that job, negotiate a pay rise, not help yourself. That doesn't, that doesn't go, that's ridiculous. Where does it stop? If you work in a nuclear power plant, well, they're not paying me much. Have a little bit of uranium. <laughs> a lovely little bit of uranium. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I do. I do. That's, a, that's a strange analogy, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> sort of left straight from a bloke nicking stuff from work. So he works in a power plant, he's having himself a bit of uranium. What's he doing with the uranium? Well, you know, Mars a day and all that, and that's for energy, and so's uranium. Sure. <laughs> More energy than the Mars bar. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. A lot of the laws of the land mm. are from the Bible. I mean that that's that kicked it off. I mean there was laws before, obviously, and there were there were different gods before before this one um, was invented. Um, but let's have a look at the Ten Commandments. Oh yeah, think, sure. I'm just going to go through. I'm just going to go down these, see which ones I um I commit. Uh, thou shalt have no other god. I don't have any god, so I haven't broken that one. Two, craven images. No, I don't have any craven. No, I, don't, I don't accept there's a god. To uh, three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord. I, again, I don't take his name in vain because I don't believe he exists, so I'm fine there. Uh, remember the Sabbath. I always remember Sunday. Um, I know, I've, I've got a calendar everything, so I haven't written that one. Uh, Honour thy father. Yeah, I do that. Uh, never commit adultery. Don't do that. Um, Ever killed I've, anyone? No, never killed anyone. Don't steal. I don't lie. And I don't covet. So... I am an amazing Christian. Pretty clear, yeah, you're a pretty clean living guy. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Well, mm -mm. Uh, whereas, I don't know, Carl, have you ever... What's your view? You... I still, um, still open, like, post that isn't for me. <laughs> I like how Why he knows what's... Why do you other people's mail? What's wrong? Uh, but he's just, he's just a fella called Bruce, who, uh... He's the bloke who used to own the flat before me. And, uh... I don't know, I started off and I thought, oh, should I pass it on? You know, because when people move, it's a lot of messing about tracking down where they've gone. Mm. So I thought, should I just leave them for a bit? And I collected some for a bit. And then there was one that sort of said, this is uh, important on the front of it. So I thought, how important is it? So I opened it. <laughs> what was it? Was it important? Uh, not really. It was from a tattooist. <laughs> What? Yeah. They said, oh, we use the AIDS needle on you. <laughs> oh. Can, you, can you come in for a little test? So I just, uh, I just started, th I just kind of thought, oh, I'll start opening it, having a look. And it was, it was weird because, do you know like how you get fed up of being yourself? No. no. But go on, well, I'm intrigued. Have, of course. No, you can just have days where you're like, what I wish is I was going Brad on? Pitt, yeah. Well, yeah. you know. And, Bruce and, Willis in your case, well, isn't it? Well, well it, this, this bloke was Bruce. So I just go, oh, let's see what you know. If I, if I was Bruce, yeah. would I be happier being him? Do you know, like yeah. I've said to you before, yeah. you never know if you don't feel well because they can't put you in someone else's body to sort of compare. So I think, well, would I enjoy being Bruce more? Sure. And what so? What have you what have you gleaned from Bruce? What's all, uh, he's got a tattoo. We know that. Uh, there wasn't that much. It was, it was mainly busy at Christmas. A lot of Christmas cards, which were good because I didn't yeah, get that Yeah, oh many. yeah. He's so you just you put up these Christmas, <laughs> Christmas cards. That's what, that's you had Christmas cards <laughs> hanging in your flat to, to, to have a lovely Christmas, Bruce. Yeah. Auntie G. Yeah. That's crazy. Hang on a minute, because when you put them on your, you know, your mantelpiece or your shelf or whatever, you're not, yeah. you're not looking at them every day. It's just a picture of Father Christmas. It doesn't matter who it's to or from. But why have them up at all? Well, why not just buy just some make blank... Just You can yeah. just buy some blank cards yeah. and put them up. Use them every There's year. No, I have to. Bruce has got a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> It was more awkward, Meanwhile, right? like across town, Bruce is just heartbroken that all his friends forgot about his birthday. They forgot about him on Christmas. They just everybody forgot he existed. The guy is just absolutely depressed in a corner with AIDS from a tattoo and just, you know, not wanting to live anymore because nobody remembers his existence at all. <laughs> Because the bloke downstairs, because I, because I used to always collect the stuff for Bruce, I got talking to a bloke who's in the same block, and like he used to see me picking stuff up for Bruce. He'd always say, you know, all right, Bruce. No, you've never told him that you're not Bruce. Well, no point. No point. I have a, a fascinating tale to tell you, Carl. I think you'll be intrigued. Um, when I do um, junkets for films and. 
in America. Um, I was assigned a, a security, and uh, um, I've had security before. Often have security, they just sort of get you in and out of the car, and usually just to control sort of all the hunters <laughs> and things. And but um, this time I was given a, a security, and he, he came in a, a suit. He looks about thirty. He looked quite unassuming. I, I thought he was from a just a security firm. It turned out that uh, he was actually LAPD, who was doing this for celebrities because he earned more money. And then um, I found out he had a gun. He said, I can't come in the airport with you. I can't take my gun. So he's armed. So I've got a security who's an APD who's, who's armed. And I'm fascinated. Now I'm fascinated. This man is walking around with me with a little earpiece, talking to everyone. He seems to know everyone. And he's got a gun. Then one night, he said, uh, he dropped me off at the hotel. And he said, uh, I've actually been called. I've got to go on a mission. They need my help. I said, really, what is it? He said, it's a hostage situation. He said, and I'm, I'm also SWAT. And I was thinking, oh, God, it's, it's, just, it's just a silent hero. Mm. So the next day, because I said, how was it? He said, oh, I was fine. He said, I just turned up. He said, I had to, I had to do it in my suit. He said, because uh, I'm the negotiator. What? So I went, oh, my God. And I just asked him questions for mm. two hours. What do you think of that, Carl, as a job? It's amazing, isn't it? What of all of it? Um, yeah, I mean, once you've done one, though, it's like any job, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah. Once you've done one. Yeah, not boring, impressed? Boring, yeah, no, 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 it's good. Could you do uh, it? Do you reckon you could do it? Do you reckon you could negotiate someone out of a hostage situation? Well, I think in one of them tones? things, there's nothing you can do. It's like, it doesn't matter if it goes wrong, because well, you, it does. you did your bit. No, it's like being a vet, isn't it? Not really, not really, because well, that's what, what it is. What I mean is, you're you're expected to no, make no, no. a little kitten leave. No, no, no. There's and loads then. of it. Because I was saying, so um, so he says, I need a car by five o'clock, or I'm gonna kill someone. He then makes sure that he doesn't kill anyone, but he makes sure that car doesn't come to a quarter past five. Okay, okay, I get all this, and it's a very weird question to ask somebody. Do you think you'd be good at that or not? Because uh, I don't think anybody can know until they're actually doing that. The only thing I have kind of, sort of, not similar, but maybe in the same vein as this. Um, <laughs> this comparison is going to be horrible, but whatever. Whatever. In the game Life is Strange, um, where you get to pick dialogues and <laughs> everything is a choice and blah, blah, blah. Um, there is a moment... <laughs> when one of the girls at the school i think she wants to yeah she wants to like jump off the building or whatever and um you you, you go up there and and you can talk her out of it right so and but they give you all kinds of choices of what to say dude i played that at least five times that part i don't know man she jumped every time <laughs> i tried so hard <laughs> I don't know if it was a choice I made previously in the game that messed that up or what. Because I don't know how that kind of the decisions kind of made. Because that game had a bunch of butterfly effect moments where it would have a little butterfly logo when you made something that defined the story later or whatever. And <laughs> I don't know. I, just, I couldn't save her. I couldn't do it. <laughs> and that always made me feel so bad. And I never actually played again from the beginning to, to try to change everything. But, damn. <laughs> so, I don't think I'd be but good. But he's not bothered, is he? If he it's is 15 bothered. minutes late. He is, because he, he really takes a bit, he empathises with these guys. And he says, no, you've got to understand. No, but the fella in the house with the gun, yeah. he's not going anywhere. 15 minutes to either side, doesn't matter. Well, why is he in a rush? I don't think Carl's getting how important sure no, You sure said, you said, yeah. they make the car 15 minutes late. Yeah. He's getting his car. That yeah. bloke's not in a rush. He's never going to get in the car, is he? And he has to get in their head. But to do that, he says that he has to empathise with them to a certain extent. He has to understand why they're doing it, to talk to them and go... Yeah, you've had a bad day. Mm. That would send anyone. <laughs> but he has to get their trust. Carl, try and, t try and talk me out. You think it's that easy? Right, I've got a hostage situation, right? They go... I got another one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I recently just kind of, I like very light shows when I eat lunch or whatever. Something I don't really have to pay attention to, but if I want to, it's, it's not bad. 
And lately I've been watching um, Mike and Molly. Honestly, it's it's it has a lot more comedy than I expected. It's it's I liked it more than I thought I would. It's funnier than I expected. And dude, just today I saw a scene. Um, the main character Mike, he's a cop, and he's got his his partner Carl. They're both cops, and they don't really do much copping or anything. But there's a particular episode on Valentine's Day where they get a call and it's a guy on Valentine's Day that he's on the ledge and about to jump and they got to go talk him out of it like through the window. <laughs> and the way they're trying to talk him out of it is like, dude, there aren't even camera crew. There's no camera crew. The news isn't here. Nothing's here. There's another guy dresses Batman on a ledge like downtown and he's on he's on all the channels and stuff. Like, today isn't your day. If you want, like, <laughs> attention, today isn't even the best day. You can do it any other day, and, and I'm sure, I'm sure you'll get, <laughs> like, you'll get attention. But Valentine's Day is, is just rough for everybody. Everybody's on a window ledge, and even the guy is like, oh, my God, you guys are terrible at this. <laughs> can you imagine somebody trying to talk something out? Just out. Wow. Oh, my God. Some people just aren't cut out for that stuff, I guess. Person we can ask for. Easy. Right, I've got a <coughs> situation, right? They go, there's only one person we can ask for. Carl. Get me Carl Pilkington. The police know that you're their top man. And there's a guy in here, he's got a gun, he's got a hostage, okay? He's just done a crime. They don't know what to do, okay? Right. You turn up. What's your first question to the... I'm talking to you. Well, no, you've got to assess... Right, I'd say, I'd say, right. Uh, I think there's a saying, actually, there's a, you say, where's brass, right? What? I found that out, I heard that, I overheard that. What's that? It was something, uh... You're what? wasting time! It was, it was that bull cunt that's just turned up. I'm gonna fucking Listen, kill him. Right, where's brass? What does it mean? I heard it at school when they... I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> just you... <laughs> it means, I heard, I heard someone use it on the... Well, I don't know what the fuck it means. It oh, means the top person of, right. of the police who are around at the moment. Yeah, well, so I'm the fucking top brass here. I've got a fucking gun against this kid's head. Who the fuck are you, you bald little shithead? Where's my car? What car? I've asked for what? a car. Where's my fucking car? Am I talking to you now, am I? Are you, are you, the, are you the negotiator? Yeah. yeah. Right, get me a fucking car. Where do you want to go? Oh, I'm, I'm fucking sore from showing. Throw a phone through the window so I can talk to you over the phone. No. All right, in a minute. Don't ever fucking say no to me. In a minute, I said. OK. Right, the clock's going. Where's this fucking Sorry, listen, phone? Listen, listen. I've got just a hang on a minute. Why are you putting the phone through, you dopey cunt? You want to talk to him? Because I don't want to give you a phone straight away. You said you've got to delay him. No, they, they, you've got to talk to them. They shouldn't even demand a phone. You should make sure you've got a phone, you dopey twat. Give him a phone. Right, thanks. All right, how's it going? That's better. All right. Uh, right. Who are you, by the way? Who are you? Who are you? Bruce. I, can't, I can't give you them details. Well, you can, because I've got to trust you, dopey sod. Are you police? Or are you just some <laughs> fucking cunt walking by? <laughs> that took me a couple you seconds, dude, Bruce. Who are you, Bruce. by the way? Who are you? Who are you? Bruce. I, can't, I can't give you them details. Well, you can, because I've got to trust you, dopey sod. Are you police? Or are you just some fucking cunt walking by? I'm a policeman. Right, I don't trust policemen. No, but I'm a bit higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> so listen. Oh, don't you tell me I'm laying down the law here. Oh, I'm going to shoot someone unless I get a fast car. I've done a robbery. It's all gone wrong. You're after now, but I want a car to the airport or on a plane standing by. You don't know me, but I do this a lot. Right? And I can tell you that it never works out right. Do you know anyone who's done what you're doing? And he's now living a happy life. Well, I don't care. I don't care about living anyway. I don't care about living out. I don't care if this goes wrong, because I'm going to shoot the hostage. What's your problem? I'm just... <laughs> he almost had it. <laughs> almost. So you've got the wrong attitude, mate. I think you've got the wrong attitude here. No, but this is... The, the, to be honest with you, this was my last week. <laughs> what, why are you sending him that? Because I want to bring him down to my level. Right. What's that got to do with it? Well... You know, I've done this job for a long time. Okay. But sometimes I felt like you. I've right. been, you know, even though I'm on this side, mm. you know, sometimes I feel like, oh, I've had enough of this. Right, well, I have had enough. 
but I I'll tell you, I don't care about living or dying here. So if I don't get a car to the airport, all bets are off. I'm killing everyone and then myself. So you'll 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 be a big loser. Now you've got to get him to stand near a window. You've got to, you've got to take him out because I've got a gun to someone's head. He was just head. near the window. What are you talking right? about? You've got what? Come on, how do you get him to stand near a window? Oh, I bet you're hot in there. <laughs> Are you going? Uh, I am. I am hot. Yeah, that's why I've just drawn the curtains and keep away from the window because the sun's blazing in. It's 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 not too bad away from the window. It's uh, the sun's gone round the back now. Just come and have a look. It's a lovely, lovely evening. Why do you want me to stand near a window? I think just because when you see how nice an evening it is. <laughs> It's that thing, I've heard, I've heard that if you smile, you, you, you feel better. So have a little smile. Think of a happy moment in your life. I'll tell you what a happy moment in my life would be. Putting a bullet through your little round head, you cunt. Keep thinking about that image. Right. And you can see that round head. Just come to the window, I'll show you the round head. <laughs> That would probably work, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? No, I'm not going to come near the window. You come near the window. You come near the, my window. Have you come? Are you coming near the window? No, not yet. Where? Stalling him again? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm, I'm coming near the window. Well, I'm going to shoot you if you come near the window, you don't be proud. Why? I thought we were getting somewhere here. No, I'm going to shoot you. I've conned you. I've, I've negotiated you to come near the window, and I'm going to shoot you in the head, you prat. Well, I'll just leave then. <laughs> <laughs> A job well done. Oh my god, dude, these guys are too freaking funny. I love it. I love all the role playing in, in, in cartoon form, all this little role playing and situations and scenarios. It's just too good, dude. Too freaking good. He he ah, he almost had it. He was close. He was on to something from up. They were even I don't, I don't know if I, in my head music was playing. I don't know if they added that or I had add, added that <laughs> in my head, but there was a moment where he almost had it. So close. Ah, oh, man. Anyway, these guys are just too friggin' much. <sighs> Bring me such joy. Anyway, there you go. Ta-da. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I need to learn how to sign off. Um... All right, so I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Click it off. Click it off now. Thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. Toodles and beware of negotiating Carl.